All right, so first thing is, let's just look at the question. It says one common system for computing a grade point average assigns four points to an A, three points to a B, two points to a C, one point to a D, zero points to an F. What is the GPA of the student who gets an A in a two credit course and so on? So I won't read everything, but you can see how this is going. So let's start to um, organize the information. First of all, we are, we are averaging grade points. So that would mean that what we're averaging would be x, and so the grade points, the point value of each grade is going to be our x value, so, or are going to be our x values. We have four points for an a. Okay, so every time we have an a, we're gonna have four points for that as an x value. Every time we have a b, we will have, um, three points, and so on. So which grades does this person get? He or she had an A and a two credit course. Okay, so a single course that was worth two credits and they got an A. So the weight for that course would be two credits, two. And then of course, the um, X times W or XW, either one is proper and algebraically, X times W would be, of course, four times two is eight. And we can do a relative reference here and click on those cells individually um, so that anytime we were to change any content here, we'd have that. Okay, now, in the next class we had a B, um, but what I notice here is that there are actually two of this type of course with three credits in which the person earned a B in each of those three credit courses. So I can actually put a B here twice. Three credits in each class. So of course, you should see a weight of nine and nine if you do it with numbers like equals three times three equals nine, right? But we can do this as a formula. And actually, since it's going to be the same type of formula as this one, we can drag it down relatively. And as I click on each one of those, if you look at the formula bar up here, you'll see um, how the formula is changing as I go to the different levels. The row reference is changing. Then we have a C, a single class for two credits. C, worth two points for a C and two credits in that class. And then a D in um, that's worth one point. I don't want this bolded. Um, that's worth one point um, for three credits. And so you can see um, we expect to see four here, three here. Let me just drag that down. Very nice. Okay. Now, I didn't say this, but I should have probably before I started doing all of this. I should have pointed to the formula for a weighted average. So I was kind of assuming you already knew that the formula for a weighted average is the sum. It looks like, let me see if I can pull, um, I don't have a way of pausing. Otherwise I would pause just now so that I wouldn't have to take up time opening anything. Um, so I'll just open this up and then I'll draw it so you can see the formula written out. And in the meantime, I'll start to put it together. So the sums, I'll put all in this row and we'll make that bolded. So these will be all my totals and I'd like to put a, a bottom border on this too so that it just looks more like a total, a total line. I can sum every single column up. I don't need every single column summed. I could do, but um, I only need specific ones. And the ones I need, I'll show you what the formula is first of all. Um, so the formula for a weighted mean, also known as an average, weighted average, is written, it looks like, X bar is equal, I'm doing this with a mouse so it's not going to look pretty, the summation 
of each individual value times the weight. So that is, remember, this means to add, and this is a multiplication. So if we remember our order of operations, Hey, you can't type either. There we go. Our order of operations, if you remember that, we used to always say P-E-M-D-A-S, right? Um, where P stood for parentheses or grouping symbols. E stood for exponents, powers. M and D go together from left to right. So it's not like you always do multiplication first and then division. It actually is whatever you see from left to right as you read the um, expression. So those go together, multiply, divide, addition, subtraction, same thing from left to right. Well, the reason I wanted to point that out is that addition, subtraction actually comes, and I'm gonna put some spaces in here to show them separately. <clears throat> So addition and subtraction actually come separate from multiply divide, right? And since multiplying and dividing comes before addition and subtraction, I would actually want to multiply each x times its individual weight and get all those products together first before doing any addition. All right, so then I'll finish writing out the formula. The bottom part is the sum of the weights. So this is a lot like doing x to the sum of x's over n's, except you have weights to consider. It's very similar to how we did the mean from a frequency distribution. Same concept, slightly different, but same concept. So that is the formula that we're using here. So I actually typed that in down here, right? Put formula and it says the sum of the quantity x times w and then divided by the sum of the w's. All right, so we're going to do that and I'm going to do some summations first. Um, I want the summations of the w's to go in my denominator of the formula and the only reason I'm doing it before anything else um, is because from left to right it's the first one. And I can actually drag that over. So it doesn't matter if you did this one, this sum first here, or that sum first. The, the important thing really is that you know which one to put into your formula first. So I'm going to put that down here in my, um, my final answer. Here, the mean is, the weighted average is, or the GPA, maybe I can put that. And this is my final answer. It is. I'm going to take the sum of all the weight times their x's and divide by the sum of all the w's, all the weights. And that'll give me my answer of 2.54. Don't forget that you can change the rounding. If it's not showing you enough um, places, you can change the number setting with the decimal places accordingly. And what else do I need to say to you? Oh, I know, one little other thing that could possibly throw somebody off, I don't know. Um, if it's written this way, which sometimes I think it is in the book, and I sometimes write it one way or the other, um, this is the same thing, right? So this, um, when you put the, in this step right here, whether you do wx or xw, they mean the exact same thing, because don't forget, multiplication is commutative. What does that mean? It means you can commute values, or in other words, move values or transport values in position, and they will give you the same answer. So for instance, two times three is three times two, right? So I um, just wanted to make sure you Believe me, that when you do, <laughs> that's supposed to be a check mark. <laughs> um, I'm glad I make myself laugh because I think I don't really make other people laugh as much as I make myself laugh, but that's that's fine. So six equals six. Good job. All right.
so what else do I need to tell you? Oh, I guess that's it. So that was one question that was sent to me. It was number five in the homework. The question ID is 3.133. Um, make sure that you are labeling your questions with their question IDs in your homework journal. And with that, I will stop here and do another question in a separate video.